turn to Mark. Mark in the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 20. Mark in the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 20. And it says, in the word of God, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And the other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth, and some thirty, and some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said to them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he saw alone that they were about him, with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, And to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are all without, without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing that they may see and not perceive, that hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest any time that they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them, And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable, and know how will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise, in which... Excuse me. And they that by the wayside, which the word is sown, but they which have heard, Satan cometh meedly, and taketh away the word that was sown into their hearts, that, that these are the likewise which are sown in the stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receiveth it with gladness, and have no root to themselves, and so endureth but for a time. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear of the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of the riches and the lust of other things entertaining in, choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as the hear of the word and receiveth it and bringeth forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Let us pray. Our precious and heavenly Father, Lord, as we have we un, we've read the word of God, Lord. And Lord, as we, it seems like in this old world, so many things come in into our lives and, and try to snatch us away. And uh, Lord, that we don't long for your word, that we don't long for the things that you offer unto us as, as the promises that you give to us in the word of God. So often it seems like that people of this world long for and, and thirst for other things rather than the word, your word. And we pray, Lord, that you, that you would bless the reading of the word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you ever had something that you, I've brought this up many times before, that you just wanted to taste something different? You wanted something maybe in, in, in a food that was just something that would that tastes different. You, you look in your cupboards and you see all the things that you have and you think, man, none of these things are satisfying any longer. It doesn't matter if they're completely packed full. You could go to the freezer and you could look at it and it could be completely packed full. Your, your shelves that you have dry, canned foods on, if you have that, could be completely packed full. And you look at all these things and you said, I just want something else. I want something that tastes good. I want something new. And so it is that we, we, can, we also, with our spiritual lives, down through the years there have been lots of ch- changes in what people eat, so to speak. I'm talking about regular food, things that people eat. And there's been a lot of changes in these things. Some things that we consider good and, and not right in the past have become acceptable and even desirable today. You know, we, there are many things that people eat in different countries that just seem like, wow, I, there's no way that we could do that and eat those things. And have you ever wondered what everyone thought when the first person was to eat an egg said? The next thing that comes out of that chicken... I'm going to eat. Can you, can you imagine what that would, that would have been like? And that out come the egg, and they eat the egg. You know, that, they must have been pretty hungry at that time. But there are other examples of eating and tasting different kinds of food that have changed the way that we eat forever, so to speak. Some good and not so good. There was once a man 
who was resisting the cost of oats that he fed his, his animals and his donkey, so to speak. So because of these terrible prices, the man decided to gradually substitute sawdust in its diet. Everything went fine for a while. The animal seemed to enjoy it and it ate it all up. But at the time the mule was satisfied with the sawdust, he died. Because you know that's, that's not exactly what you feed an animal. Everything went fine for a while, but after a while it caught up to him and it, and it killed him. How different are we in the same type of thinking spiritually in our own lives? Have you ever thought about that? How different are we as God's people in any different way in our spiritual lives and the things that we think of? So often, as we look at those cupboards in our homes, we, have a, we get a different taste for something. We want something else, something that it seems that would be more satisfying. Spiritually, and spiritually thinking, we as people, as God's people, so often people will do the exact same thing. God offers them so much. Their cupboards could be full of all the wonderful blessings that God wants to give to them, all the good things that he has to offer. If God would offer a freezer and we'd look in it and be full, he would still continue to offer us many good things in life. But yet people still seem to have a different taste for the food, something different in their lives, something they're spiritually Spiritual food that they're looking for. Maybe it's because of the, of the price. As that man offered his donkey sawdust because of the price of the oats. Maybe spiritually that's why so many people are looking for something different. Because they think that they're resisting what price they must pay to serve God as their Lord and Savior. So they go looking elsewhere. They find these things beside God more desirable. And like I said, maybe they're resisting in their own minds the things that they think that they need to give up. That they think what they have to give up other than the things of the world is a higher, higher price than what they really are willing to pay in their lives. That God requires them to give up or sacrifice to follow after him. You see, when people, and this includes each one of us, start feeding themselves on worldly things. Starts entertaining the things of the world, so to speak. And I like, I, I'd almost so much call this sawdust. The things that people are trying to entertain themselves with. Because eventually it's going to kill them in it, spiritually. It will come back to them. Rather than seeking after God's word and the things that God wants to give to them. And, and to, to offer them the good gifts and the promises. They skip out on being in God's house, reading God's word. They find their hearts and the things that they pass through their minds are more worldlier than the things of God. And so to speak, I believe there are things, substitutes that people try to fulfill their lives with. To try to get that joy and that happiness that God can give to them. But yet they would rather enjoy the things of, of the world than, than to serve after God. But sooner or later it's going to be too late until they find out that they're chasing after indulging in the wrong things. Until it's too late. And I am talking about spending eternity either in heaven or hell. Seeking after the things of the world will condemn us to hell because get, we get so tied up in those things and that we find that they're more satisfying. And it seems like today that more and more people are, are slowly walking away from God. And the Bible speaks clearly of that, that, more, that few will find the way to heaven. That few will, want, will, will choose the path to go to heaven, but more and more people will find things of this world that are more enjoyable. They lust for things often that is greater and it seems like so often that these things that the world has to offer has a greater magnetism or cause our intense desire to passion for anything other than God's word. You know, it's important that we, we under, re read God's word and that we understand it. You know, this is what chokes us and draws us life from us and that we will become unfruitful and unworthy of the promises that God has given to us if we follow after the things of, the, of this world. But you know, sadly enough, it seems that, like that many churches across this nation are allowing more and more things of this world to creep in. To become a part of their services, to become a part of their, their beliefs and the things that they stand for. And slowly, they are dying. You know, God's word is a wonderful thing, isn't it? It is. And if you ever talk to someone who truly has fallen in love with God's word, they will testify to you that it is a wonderful thing. Today, how many people here like to read anything? How many people here just like to read anything, a book? 
There's some hands going up. There's some people that love to read. And, and there's some people that love to read to, what, to, to such a great extent that they can read a book or several books in a week. I can honestly tell you that I'm not one of those people that can sit down and read books and several, several books in a week. I love to read God's Word, but not other books. <laughs> Magazines, pictures, wonderful. <laughs> Captions. But there's some people who love and they and they and they they get something from that. They they have thirst for the knowledge or the things that these books share to them and how they speak to them in the words that the writer has written written. And they long for the, the, the knowledge and they get committed in reading, so to speak, and they find knowledge that just cannot be put that other things cannot give to them. There's something that compels them that they want more and more in their reading because they enjoy it. Do you know that God's word gives us much, much knowledge? And lots of people would rather have another taste than to seek after that knowledge. So often, like anything, and not putting anyone down here who likes to read, that's a wonderful thing. But how often do we read God's word with the same thirst and desire? How often do we seek after God's word and the knowledge that he places in the word of God? And do we long for it? That we get to that point that we just want more and more of reading God's word. How much time do we spend with God and in his word? You know, standing in the storms of life required us for us to have great commitment and desire for that closer walk with God. But many have a desire, like I said, for other things. A different taste. God offers us many things according to his word. And if we read God's word, we have that understanding that he gives us all those promises that we can walk each day and, and, and with a faith that, that we don't have to worry about tomorrow. How many people are worrying about tomorrow already? In your mind that you're facing things in your life that you're just worrying, man, how am I going to get through tomorrow? What are the things that I have to do? Time is pushing me. Why worry about tomorrow? But worry about the things that God places in front of you right now. Seek after his word and understand his promises and to, to get that faith that, that can move mountains. You know, whether we choose to build our house either in a godly foundation or in the sand, meaning that we choose to build upon the things of the world. So many people choose that way, to build upon the things of this world. And referring to Matthew, how the, how the, the foolish man built his house upon the sand. In Matthew seven twenty six to 27, says, Everyone that heareth these things, Sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house on the sand. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell great and great was the fall of it. So often people, they, they get that taste for the things of the world and they build their house upon the foolishness of things of the world seeking that their life is going to stand that everything is okay. I heard one guy said, tell someone else you need to go to church and the, other, and the response to that other person was, uh, everything, I'm okay. Everything seems to be going good. I'm all right. And so often this is the thinking of the world, that taste, they have a different taste rather than what God truly wants to offer them. And I, yet I don't know if they don't understand that, that there, is, there is a sure foundation in God that they believe so much that the, the things that they believe in this world is sure to them. You know, reading God's word is not just hearing about God's word, is it? It's about doing it. We can hear God's word and we can read it, but what's most important is that we do it, that we live that life that is pleasing to God, that the Lord, that the Bible and the Lord and the things that he wants to give to us becomes real to us in our lives. It's because of those who are doing those things that, that come from the word of God. You know, many, many people hear God's word, but do they truly understand God's word? Do they truly want to get, understand God's word? and to know everything about it, their Lord and their Savior. Many argue, I've read God's word, but I just can't understand it. I just don't know what that means, all these thou's and that's and, and so forth. And you know how God's word is placed out in the King James Version and many other things. But they said they, can, they read it and they said they cannot understand. You know, it's not in our own understanding, is it? We're not to understand God's word with our own understanding. It's God's Holy Spirit that reveals those things to us. And that gives us the understanding of his word and his timing. 
It's God's Holy Spirit that will speak to us and give us understanding of the things that he wants us to know. But we must pray for that understanding. We must seek after that understanding that God, that we may know God's word. Oftentimes I think it's like that if, we, if you would enter into a, 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 a town that was empty. If you would enter into a town that was completely empty and all that was there was buildings. Wouldn't you want to know what it was about? Wouldn't you want to know why it's empty? Wouldn't you check out every little crack and cranny, every little room, figuring out where the people went? You'd want to know everything about it. God's word is the same way, and God himself is the same way. If we fall in love with God, we need to know everything possible. We need to seek after God, to know what his desires are for our lives, to know what his word says, to know why the different parables in life and how it can be used in our own life and how that we ourselves are a part of that and how God wants to use us in a special way that we may touch other people. We must fall in love with God in a way that, that people cannot move us from our faith. To know what God wants for us in our lives. To fall in love with that word of God. If you've ever tried to check out a new vehicle before, and I would, I would know, and people may not admit to this, but you go in, you start pushing buttons, don't you? You find out how that seat folds back. You find out how that trunk works and the door handles work and the locks work and what's all them buttons on that steering wheel do. You check out everything, making sure that you understand what you're buying is what you want. But you get curious. You check under the seats. You see how you check them to see if they move up and down. You go out and maybe even kick the tires for whatever reason. But you look at them, and you look under the hood to see what engine it's got. When was the last time you checked out God that way? When was the last time that you felt like that you got into God's word, and you read God's word, and, and, you, and not only you read God's word, but you prayed to God wanting to know more and more about your Lord and Savior, that you checked in every possible way. Lord, what about this? Lord, what do you want me to do in my life? Lord, what is my purpose? Lord, why did you do this? Why is this written down this way? You know, we're not supposed to question God, but we're supposed to find out about God and be, Him be a part of us. And the, we're supposed to know God personally as our Lord and Savior. And to walk that walk that is so close that we know what God wants for us in our lives. If people would only do that, Lord, just who are you? And how am I a part of your plan that you want for me? Have you truly walked with God that way? Have you truly sought after God that you, that Lord, I just, want, I just want so much of you. I just want you to fill me from the top of my head. Lord, I just, want, I just want you in me. And I want to know your word. When people come to me and ask me questions, Lord, I just want to know what your Bible says to me. And what I can tell other people that your word says. That I may make a difference in life You work it with you working through me. It's an incredible thing to know the knowledge of God. And to know the things that he has written in his word. You know, as I look around society today, it's sadly across this nation in which we, which we live, and, and so to speak, it's lost its seasoning, so to speak. Have you ever had something set in your cupboards for a long period of time, a seasoning of any sort? And after a while, it kind of gets stuck together from humidity or whatever it is, and after a while, you leave it in there long enough, it's really no good anyway, is it? It's set in there, but it has no taste. It doesn't bring back the freshness or the desired taste that you want. How are we any different as God's people? As churches across this nation today, how are we any different? What kind of taste do we have right now for Jesus Christ as God's people? Are we on fire for God or are we, are we just sitting back, just sitting on a shelf, losing the seasoning that we should have? The ability to be able to reach out and to touch other people that they may know that God lives in our lives and that we can make a difference in their lives because of God living through us. That they see God's love through our lives. So often I believe we're losing that as people. Can we be distinguished from Christians from non-Christians? I want you really truly to think about that. Can we be seen differently as Christians from non-Christians today? Many going to say, oh yeah, we can see a difference. But think about this a minute. Our morality in light is decaying, so to speak, as a nation. And the non-Christian world looks so no different than the lives of so-called believers. We allow homosexuals in the, to lead our congregations. 
We condemn we condone the same sex marriages in our nation today, and many churches do that today. We stand by as abortion clinics continue to rise up. So where are the churches today? Where are the ones who are supposed to be the ones who are making the difference in this life? The ones who are supposed to be step making people would know what is right and for wrong. Where are the churches today? So often it seems like they're getting a different taste of the things of this world, allowing those things to enter in into our, our, our churches. There seems to be no more difference from people who do not claim to know God as their Lord and King. We sit, talk, we sit back as, as churches and we talk about the decay of our nations, but yet we offer no solutions. Or we try to attempt to make no difference. We fail to take a stand for where we should be take, making a difference in life. We allow the things of this world to penetrate the churches. We see no wrong. We fail to truly seek after God as our Lord and Savior. And this goes personally for each and every one of us. You know it begins with each and every one of us, doesn't it? And you've ever noticed and sometimes you, you see people that seem to be on fire for God that, and, and going back to knowing God's word, you see people who just want more and more of God's word. You see people who, are, who, who you know that are prayer warriors. You see people who know, truly know that what God's word is about and, 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 and are interested in knowing, is this right? Things am I doing in my life, is it right? Or the things that I do each and every day, is God a part of it? You can truly see, start to begin to see the people that, that God is living in and how, how slowly the swindling, the small numbers of churches are beginning to become as people begin to lose that taste for God. I mean, like I said, we sit back and we talk about the things that happen in this world, but yet we do nothing. We may have a cow, but we call it a horse. We sin and we call it okay. We allow things to enter in so that we don't hurt someone else's feelings. We, don't, we are afraid to tell other people that, hey, you're not living right. The things that you're doing are not right. But we ignore them and we allow them to be okay. Are you living that life today that is perfect for God? Are you living a life that, and have that taste for Jesus Christ in your life today? Are you becoming as, an, as a seasoning that does not have any use at all anymore? Become dull and stale. It's important that we seek after God and to be God's people as we should be. You know, it used to be a, the churches in this nation used to be churches that stood with principle when God was the head of the church when God was considered to be holy. When a church was a place where you went and it was considered to be a place that was holy, that people would come to grow closer to God because they knew who it was that, turned, that would turn this nation around. God's word tells us in Matthew seven fourteen, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, few there will be that find it. You know, so often we talk about things that people, how people will be judged. I think we will be judged as God's people for the lack of things that we truly do. So often I think that we should, we get so lazy in our walk. It's easy to get lazy in anything you do, isn't it? Especially if you've done it for a long period of time. You find, you begin to feel like you lose that zeal or that, that longing to do something, that desire. And so often we need revive, don't we? We need God in our lives, and, and I believe as things begin to enter into, into the different churches around the nation, that so often we lose that zeal. Do you know God has placed us, this church here exactly where he want us, wants us to be? So many times I've seen in the, in the short period of time that we have been here, how God has used this church to be, to be an example, to show love to other people within this community and to reach out in many different places and even across, the, even across the seas, as God has placed within people's hearts a desire to want to reach those people. And that's a wonderful thing. And God has placed us here to, many times, I believe, to stand in those gaps, to be strong, to be the people that God has called us to be. You know, so often we think that we are a small congregation, and we are small compared to some, but a mighty congregation we are as long as we are faithful to the calling 
that God places upon us. We can make a difference. Someone has to make a difference. God needs people that will be willing to sacrifice. Willing to say, I'm going to serve him no matter what. God has called each and every one of you here today to be those people. To make a difference. You can. He's given us all different abilities. That we can stand together. And God always provides. He strengthens and he encourages us. And he wants us to be there. But most important, he wants us to have a taste for him. A love. A desire to want to know his word. A desire to know, want to know everything about him that is possible. A question to each and every one of us personally. What kind of taste do we have for God? Do we truly, truly trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? And do we long for the things that God wants to give to us? It's important, I think, that we fall in love with God like we've never fallen in love before. You know, many people are going to be searching for things in life, looking for answers, wanting, wanting things answered, looking for the uneasiness of the things of the world. Today you hear more and more. Everyone you talk to, it seems like, well, where are we going as a nation? Where, is God, where are we going? We seem like we have fallen to the bottom of everything, that we cannot fall any farther as, as a nation that is supposed to be founded upon God. And I would agree with that. I would agree that we have, maybe we have not reached bottom yet, but I would agree we're at the, one of the lowest points we've ever been. And it's time that God's people take a stand and truly show their faith. Witness to other people. Bring people in to the kingdom of God. Show them God's love and make a difference. Read God's word and uphold it and set high standards in your thinking, in your homes, in your walk with God. When was the last time you truly read God's Word? Not just maybe one scripture, but truly got into reading God's Word. Set time and read God's Word. Pray to God for more than 15 minutes. And saw it after His face. And grow closer to Him. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that You would give to us a new taste for You. Lord, that you would revive us, take us up to the next pedestal, so to speak, Lord, and you give us, once again, that, that we can have a faith that is immovable, that people will know that you live within us, that we have that love of you shining out, that we can make a difference. Lord, that you would continue to use us, that you would open more doors, and that we would be able to witness to other people, and not, not just hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. Lord, we thank you for this day. What a wonderful day it is. We ask you to bless and touch the hearts of the people ministering to us, Lord. And give us a desire to want you more and more like never before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.